Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Well, hello. We're back again with uh, Dr. Liz Lister and my partner, John Coleman. How are you doing, Liz? Fantastic. Thank you. How are you, Art? Great. Thank you. John? Good morning. Good morning. Everybody looks great, healthy, trim, fit. And of course, <laughs> this is before we eat ourselves silly during the holidays. Mm. Dr. Liz, I'm sure you deal with your patients and maybe yourself as well. We, I, I don't know if it's everybody, but I certainly overeat during the holidays and, um, and then go in this you know, January diet when all the commercials come out and selling your weight loss stuff. Help me, help me get through the holidays in a normal fashion. <laughs> Absolutely, exactly. Well, first of all, it can be a stressful time. I know it's supposed to be the most wonderful time of, year, of the year. That's probably the Christmas carol that irritates me the most because I am aware of how stressed out people can get during the holiday season. So that's very important. It's very important to do everything possible, all those things that you know to do to calm your mind, to help you deal with stress. Now is the time to start to implement those, to queue up your favorite app for a calming meditation, anything that you need to do, time for yourself to manage stress. I would say that's probably top priority. That's number one. Okay, but uh, as far as uh, not... Look, we have all the, even if we don't eat a lot of sweets and cakes and things like that, at, at special occasions, uh, maybe what we do is we overdo it. Uh, and then, uh, yes. I know from time to time, not like anybody else, my own problem is that uh, I may not, I may avoid sweets and cookies and things like that. And then we'll have a special occasion and I could barrel through, uh, you know, uh, when I was younger, uh, a, a whole canister of uh, Oreos. Uh, so if there was one Absolutely. there, okay, and then uh, then I would buy a second one two or three days later after we've run out, whereas I wouldn't have otherwise had it for months. So how do we maybe avoid, <laughs> that's my downfall. Is that uh, typical? And if so, uh, how can people avoid that kind of binging? Okay, that brings us to my second major point, which is to do everything possible to not arrive at an event or a, a scenario, maybe even just work where there's going to be that kind of temptation to not arrive hungry. This is the time to step up your game, to have breakfast. I am a breakfast believer. I know there's different schools of thought on that. We can talk another time about intermittent fasting and what that means and what people do with that. However, I definitely think it's important to break your fast. Just like mom said, most important meal of the day, breakfast breaking your fast, and then eating at regular intervals. It makes your body calm down. It makes your body and brain not anticipate being hungry. And that is a major tool to fight cravings, okay? Particularly family gatherings. Even if you have to have a power bar or something so that you do not arrive hungry. It's the same as when you arrive at a restaurant. If, you're, if you arrive at a restaurant hungry, the first thing they bring is the bread basket. You're going to power your way through the bread basket. You're designed that way. We're designed to eat when food is available. The problem is nowadays food is always available. A few hundred thousand years ago, it took quite a bit more effort to get food into our mouths. Whereas now it's about as simple as walking into the kitchen and opening the fridge. Okay, so uh, come in and... Um... Uh, not be hungry. Uh, I guess that's also like drinking a lot of water before meals, and that's all part of the same yes. concept. Uh, that's exactly right. Okay. And In fact, a lot of times when we think we're hungry, we're actually thirsty. So drinking lots of water regularly throughout the day, very, very critical. Uh, John, that's interesting. John, that's you, interesting. You, you're almost a perfect human being. Do you ever have any problems with a diet? <laughs> Not me, because I'll then go on a binge fast ah. or something, mm -hmm. some diet-related uh, uh, program. Oh, do I... you, Dr. Liz, do you, do, you, um, do you have your patients 
um, go on to a, a special diet uh, to help them lose weight? I do. I have a couple of different programs that I like. They both involve eating at regular intervals, which we were just talking about. They both involve eating breakfast, uh, in particular, within an hour of waking up. Okay, again, so the body doesn't go into starvation mode. If we go into starvation mode, our bodies are going to hunker down. The metabolism is going to actually slow down, and it's going to fight any efforts that we're making to lose weight. So eating at regular intervals, and also everything else that we're talking about, managing stressors, good quality sleep, drinking enough water. These are what we call the habits of health. Habits of health and the program that I encourage my patients to use addresses all of these habits of health. It includes coaching and support. It includes eating at regular intervals. So it's very comprehensive and addresses all these aspects of a good, healthy eating program because we all have to eat. Okay, yeah. so so uh, uh, for particularly again for the holidays, uh, if you show up yes. and you've eaten, don't come hungry. Um, uh, eat at regular intervals, especially before you go to a party. So not only you're not hungry, but it's it's like okay, this is just another meal. Any other particular strategies for maybe you have uh, uh, binged a little bit too much uh, during the holidays? Uh, that that next day, how do you prevent yourself from just saying, oh, okay, look. Yesterday was okay. I could have another day like that or another day. And all of a sudden it's weeks later and uh, you, you, you've gotten a couple of boxes of Oreos. Uh, and, and for equal opportunity, yes, there are some people who like Hydrox. I'm an, <laughs> I'm an Oreo, single, single Oreo uh, guy, uh, but not Hydrox. Hydrox, totally different taste. <laughs> Uh, so, are there any that used other? to be my drug of choice. Oreos used to be my drug of choice. I'm recovering from from that addiction. <laughs> okay, well, but okay. it's taken so, it's taken so. quite a bit. I do. I, I have two more tricks. Okay. I, I have two tricks I can think of offhand. In addition to not arriving hungry, another one is if it's potluck, bring something healthy. Okay. Now I know that this holiday season is going to have different and interesting stressors to it. However. These same rules apply if it's a uh, family gathering or any type of small gathering that we'll be going to, and you're not sure what's going to be served. You can either find out ahead of time or just offer to bring something healthy, a healthy salad, something that you enjoy eating. Okay, that's number one. Number two is, a, this is especially important in a buffet type of scenario, an all-you-can-eat kind of scenario what you want to do in that situation is serve up your plate initially. And that is your plate of food. This is a really good trick, very handy mm. trick, because what those are designed to do is have you be not aware of how much you're eating. And so to combat that, all you have to do is load up your plate the way that you, the quantity that you want to eat that's right for you of the foods that you want to eat and that is your food, and you carry it around with you. And then nobody can say, oh, I see you have an empty plate. Let's fill that up, okay, oh, because you've gotten in front of that. That's a good trick. That's a good trick, because that happens. That, that kind of thing happens a lot. But, but John, I, John, no bringing the Home Depot bucket. I mean, that's not a plate. <laughs> that's, that's too big a plate. Right. I have one thing I want to add, and that is because during the holidays, um, there's a lot of alcohol served. And uh, that's I learned, good. Very good. I learned years and years ago, my father was a diabetic, and so he, very early on, had to stop all alcohol, which was a, a big challenge in our family, let me tell you. Um, and, and I learned that all the alcohol, because it comes basically with sugar, is it will put weight on you. So if you either watch your weight or you don't want to put weight on, uh, limit your alcohol and uh, and you know maybe one glass of wine or one beer something like that. So I'm I'm relatively cautious about how much I drink, which I can't say was always the case. Um, but I think that's good advice too in terms of weight loss. Exactly, absolutely. That's very important. 
again, it's a chicken and egg with sleep. Alcohol impairs sleep, and sleep is really important to weight. As you said, alcohol, most alcohol, for example, most wine, well, all of wine, wine is fermented sugar. Okay, that's that's what wine is. And many alcohols, the pitfall can be the mixes. Okay, mm. so you can have some type of very clean alcohol that doesn't have a very big metabolic impact. But if you mix it with a nice sugary mix, then like you said, you're going to be having much more of a sugar intake than you than you thought right so and, and it also is going to lower so if it impairs sleep that can lower your ability to cope with stress so although a lot of people rely on having a drink to calm their minds this is the time to do what you can now, i'm not saying to go zero for people who are able to have a drink now and then but to keep that in mind, okay, not have it be the method, the method of managing stress, because it definitely uh, has a negative impact uh, on our waistline. Yeah. Uh, keep uh, everything in moderation is uh, basically exactly, exactly. Yeah. including moderation. <laughs> including, well, one, one nice thing about the, uh, the COVID experience is that we're not going to a whole lot of parties. So there may be indeed, yeah. but alcohol consumption has gone up. That's what the statistics seem yep. to show. So people yeah. are using alcohol as a way of coping with negative feelings. So yeah, we've been, we need to settle in for the long haul and we need to improve our abilities to manage our schedule, deal with stress, calm our minds in ways that uh, doesn't use, you know, we can use alcohol as an enjoyment rather than a coping tool. Right, it may, makes me think about uh, when most of the states, uh, uh, New York that was draconian uh, with lockdowns for a while and Northeast and other states, they all seem to open up grocery stores and liquor stores as being <laughs> essential uh, right. uh, businesses. Uh, makes you think about that. But yes. Anyway, getting back, getting back to mindful eating in the holidays. So uh, we have, uh, let's see what we have. We have don't don't go don't go to a, a, a someplace that, where you're hungry. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're really worried about uh, binging on something, you you shouldn't bring a dish, a potluck dish, that you like, and maybe graze off of that. Fill your plate uh, at the very beginning. Once, once, once and uh, graze off of that for the majority of the party. And uh, lastly, uh, probably don't consume a lot of alcohol. Uh, have a, one or two drinks if uh, that's what makes it sort of nice for the holidays for you, but uh, stay away from that. Uh, and then once you've finished for the holidays, uh, how do you get back to your resolve to not eat all the extra things that you had at that party? I'm, I'm listening to your question and I'm thinking, you know, there is essentially no month of the year that there isn't a holiday, at least in the United States, that involves food. Mm. I, I always say that January, I think January doesn't have a holiday where you're supposed to buy chocolate or eat particular foods. You know, every other month of the year, uh, has something there. So everything that we're talking about are good rules to follow all year long. Maybe it'll be an interest, a different holiday season where it's not going to the office and everybody's bringing lots of junk food to the office uh, because more people are working from home. Yeah, uh, but somebody, somebody will have a birthday, right? Oh, exactly. Well, that's what yeah. I'm saying, that that happens all year long. That's exactly yeah. what I mean. Right. You know, that what we're talking about today is useful all year long. Let's see, today it, it, we're taping this on a Monday. So the Monday is a Chocolate Monday, Cheesecake Tuesday, <laughs> uh, uh, Kanish, Potato Kanish Wednesday. I mean, oh, Lock I, I, Thursday. I'm, sure. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm having, fa um. I'm having fantasies now. <laughs> okay. Liz, Dr. Liz, uh, this has been uh, very, I love your advice because it's medically based, but it's always very practical things that we can do uh, on a reasonable basis. Uh, I you just reminded me of one more trick. Can sure. I bring up one more Please. trick? Sure. 
talking about the medical basis. So the problem with the candies and the chocolates and the, the what we call junk food is the glycemic impact, the sugar impact on our bodies, right. because our body responds with releasing insulin to calm down and handle that sugar that we just took into our bodies. And insulin causes weight gain. Hmm. It's actually the insulin that causes people to put on weight. Okay, mm. because if you eat sugar and you're exercising, you eat a modest amount of sugar, but you're keeping active, and this is the trick, is combining the sugar, whether it's fruit or whatever it may be, with protein. That is going to reduce that glycemic impact, that sugar impact into the body. The body can handle it better if it's not just a shot of sugar. If it's combined with protein, combined with vegetables, that's going to make a difference and be helpful to the body's response. So let me get this right. When I have my payday bar, I should have a big hamburger with it. Maybe Just the kidding. hamburger patty, not the bread. How about <laughs> no, that? Omit the bun. Okay. Okay. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to beat this one to death, I think. But uh, <laughs> so let me, let me, let me finish with the pun that, uh, uh, all the advice uh, that you give us, uh, Dr. Liz, is wonderful. And uh, we just can't wait for the next one because we just eat them up. We eat up all your advice. Oh. Okay. With that, Thank uh, you. Uh, happy holidays. Enjoy. And remember, don't show up hungry. Eat reasonably. Yes. Good. Dr. Liz, see you soon. See you. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.